Today, we're gonna find out which is better, ASICs versus GPUs, and I got a feeling there's gonna be a lot of tears in the comments section, and to that, I say that's fine, bring it on. I love collecting tears. So in today's example, I'm going to be comparing the K7, and yes, this is in hand, as you can see right there. This is K7, man. This is one of the top ASICs out there. Sometimes I'm making 20 bucks a day, sometimes I'm making 14 bucks a day, and that's with 17 cents kilowatt. Shout out to Endless Mining for sending us this. Unfortunately, I don't get to keep it. I wish I could, man. I really do. It's just for review. I got to send it back to DeFi Django, actually, for the next one. So look out for DeFi Django. And we will be putting it up against a 12 GPU mining frame. Now, I'm not going to use OctoMiner, but this is an X12 that has 12 GPUs in it. You can just, you know, use an open air rig if you want for comparison, but this one doesn't have 12. Actually, I don't think I have any open air rigs with 12, but it was the fairest comparison. So that's what we're going to be using in today's video. So both of these cost you roughly $6,000 to get into, and I'll show you a whole breakdown of how I got that math. And I want to say something real quick, man, before I show you all of that information, you could talk about shoulda, woulda, coulda, or maybe the price in three years will be this or that. Yeah, sure, you could. But how do I put that in a YouTube video? How do I go into the future, right? At the making of this video, we're in March, early March of 2023. How do I say three years from now, the price could be this, or it could be that? Or maybe this ASIC will appreciate three times, which is much more than this, this 12 or X12 or open air rig for 12 GPUs will. So yeah, shoulda, woulda, coulda, a little bit impossible to figure out and I don't really want to focus on that because my strategy is different than yours right maybe hobbyist thinks that the coins are going to go up three times from now maybe red panda thinks it's going to go 10 times from now maybe I only think it's going to go up two or three times you see the problem here so it becomes a big issue with opinions and I don't care about people's opinions let me rephrase that it's not that I don't care about your opinion it's just that's not really a fact or data or any type of evidence towards anything so for the ASIC side, I had a choice. Right now, there are three ASICs, maybe four if you want to count the L7, but there's three ASICs that are top of the line, brand new miners. I mean, these things are going to make you insane profits. That being the D9, which mines Dash, the KA3, which mines Cadena, and the K7, which mines Nervos. So between all of those, I said, what is probably the most likely for a decent buy? And I did come to the conclusion that the K7 probably was the best because you can get that roughly for $6,000. You know, if you did a couple weeks ago, it was a little less. By the time you see this video, maybe it's a little bit more. We're going to call it roughly $6,000. And if you can see this light blue color here, you'll see it's roughly $6,000 worth of parts, give or take, right? Of course, you can go onto eBay and get a little bit cheaper, but I want to go for an average price, not the most expensive, not the least expensive. I'm not looking for used. We're looking for new because we're comparing a brand new K7. It's not really fair to compare to your Facebook marketplace where you can get it for half these prices or something like that like that, right? I didn't really feel like that was okay. So today we're using the 3070 and I said the average price is roughly $400. Some places in the world, they're five, $600 after tax shipping. I went with $400. I think you can definitely find some 3070s, maybe new or new-ish for about $400. So 400 times 12 was $4,800. We went $150 on the CPU and motherboard, $30 on some RAM, $30 for a frame. You might think that's a little cheap, but you can actually get those on Amazon right now. We went $48 on on the risers, $20 on the SSDs, $24 in Y splitters, $538 for two times PSUs. Because remember, we're running 12 GPUs. We need six pins or six PCIEs in both of these in the back. You can find it more expensive if you went the 1200 platinum. This would be closer to $700. You could obviously go cheaper and get something a little cheaper, but I went for that average ground and that's about $840 worth of parts. So roughly that's $5,640. So hopefully now you can understand we're using the K7, which costs a about $6,000 and roughly $6,000 worth of GPUs. The same amount invested, your electric rate, I would assume, isn't going to change at all. So we'll keep the electric rates the same between both of them. Okay, so starting with the graphics card, there's gonna be that left column. If you look in the top left corner, that darker blue, this is for a single graphics card. And all I did was take these numbers and put them down times 12, as you can simply see in the yellow mark. So that's really what we're gonna be focused on more is this yellow grouping. Using data from what to 
to mind. Maybe you like what to mind. Maybe you don't. Whatever. For this example, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference, to be honest with you. At 17 cents kilowatt, so $6,000 investment, 17 kilowatt, someone like me, uh, the whole rig would be losing about 24 cents every single day. If I had 12 cents, something a little bit more reasonable, I'd be making a dollar and 20 cents. If I had 10 cent kilowatt, I'd be making one dollar and 80 cents. If I had eight cent kilowatt, which I think very few people have these days, I'd be making about two dollars and 40 cents. And if I had an incredible electric rate like six cents, this rig, the six thousand dollar investment would make me roughly three dollars every single day. Now, if we focus more to this red color over here, this is going to be how long it would take us to pay off. Obviously, if it's negative for 17 cents, you would never pay yourself off at the current numbers. Yes, it can go higher in the future, of course. But how do I theory craft that? I have no idea. So 12 cents, it would take us 4,700 days to pay itself off, or really just to make your money back. At 10 cents, 3,133 days. If you have 8 cent kilowatt, that's 2,350 days. Or if you have 6 cents kilowatt, that'd be 1,880 days. Now I know what you're thinking, but DJ, but DJ, this doesn't make sense. You're using today's numbers. Well, that's all the data that we have today in the moment. We will get into theory crafting at the end. Okay, just hang on, guys. Now to look at the ASIC side, honestly, the dash miner, the new D9 is the most profitable. It really depends when you look, but we're going to use the K7 because it's a little bit more affordable for people, I think. So 17 cents kilowatt, you'd be making roughly $11.17 every day. 12 cents kilowatt, you'd be making about $14.87. 10 cents kilowatt, you'd be making about $16.35 every day. At 8 cent kilowatt, you'd be making about $17.83. And at 6 cents kilowatt, you'd be making about $19.50. And how long would that take you to break even? Well, for your $6,000 investment, if you're on a terrible electric rate like myself, 17 cents, that's 537 days. If you're at 12 cents, that's 403 days, almost a year right there. 10 cents, it's just about a year at 366 days. 8 cents, you're at 336 days. 6 cents, you're at 310 days break even. So at this point, you're probably thinking, who would buy the GPU? We'll get into all that. There are some situations where I think GPUs are going to be great. But let's take out, let's do something here. Let's go to what to mine. We're at 10 cents. We're looking at a 3070. Let's calculate one more time. What if you were to take out Radiant? What if you were to take out this coin that really most people don't even know about or Bitcoin Gold? Bitcoin gold. Let's just take out both of these. Even a Lithium, right? Nine cents. This is at 10 cent kilowatt, guys. This is at 10 cent kilowatt, and it just had a pump. If you were to take away some of these no name coins that really people don't even know about, you think you're making negative cents, negative nine cents, negative 10 cents, and this story continues on and on. Caspa, you do have four cents. Okay, so I mean, yeah, I, I guess that adds up over time. A nickel, grin, negative 12 cents. And any of the, the projects that you like that people genuinely research, oh, forget about it, man. Ravencoin, negative 17 cents. Flux, negative 10 cents. Firo, negative 12. Anything you can think of that you actually like and you're interested in, negative 8 cents. Whereas on the ASIC side, you can pretty much make money regardless of your electric rate. When someone like me comes into it, I'm like, dang, man, I feel defeated because I started at 12 cents. They quickly moved me to 15, 16. And now I'm in between 16 and 17 cents. I can't even get really involved with the GPUs. Yeah, sure. If I want to throw away money, if I would literally want to burn money and give it to the electric company. Yeah, absolutely. I can because people will say I don't want to support buying the coin. That makes no sense to me. Why why would you not at least be open-minded enough to purchasing things from exchanges when you're more interested in helping the electric company? Does that make sense? What has the electric company done for you? Because for me, it has done nothing but do me dirty and raise my electric rate. So yes, if you're a GPU miner with under 10 cents kilowatt, maybe 10 cents, you're kind of pushing it at 10 cents. I can definitely see how you want to make a nickel or a quarter a day. It does make sense to some extent. But for the people that I see who are in terrible Terrible situations like myself or even worse ASIC mining in the current market is certainly the way to go why because yes you only make 13 14 dollars a day but that's a lot man I have roughly hundred and fifty thousand dollars invested in GPUs and this one ASIC out there in the garage makes far more money than a hundred and fifty thousand dollar operation let me tell you even if I went to 200 or two hundred fifty thousand dollars this one little ASIC would certainly make more than hundreds of thousands of dollars spent. Let that sink in for a moment.
So the all-time high of Radiant, which is 0 0.0025. That is the all-time high. It has never even gotten close to that. To be fair, there's not a lot of data on this project. I mean, do we want to say, yeah, the, the current price of this is 0 0.0007. Could it get back up to this? Yeah, I don't see any reason why it couldn't. Of course, you could make that argument for the GPU side. But if we start saying what ifs and future stuff, couldn't I make that exact same argument for CKB? It looks like CKB is a lot more consistent, at least right here. If, if we look at 0 0.0046, its all time high was about four cents. So that's a 10x. Couldn't I say that? that yes, also in this situation, that this ASIC could also 10X the same way any of these GPU coins would be. In fact, you could look at the next best up, which would be Alephium. Do you want to look at Alephium's chart? Okay, so let's get rid of Radium. Let's look at Alephium, the second best choice right now, up 15.79%. That is some really big gains, absolutely. And the chart looks pretty decent on the 24 hour. However, oh my goodness, when we zoom out, it's the exact same story with this unproven coin have no knowledge of this. Could this go up? I don't know. Yeah, sure. I, I guess it could, right? But do we want to make this argument that this is going to 10x? I don't know. Maybe it could. I have no idea. This is the reason for this particular video that I said I didn't think it meant a lot to say in the future it's going to go up a lot because you could literally say that about ASICs. You could literally make the exact same conversation in theorycraft that one or the other could go up exponentially. I don't know what the future will entail. I do think that they both will go up gpu and asic and again i am very pro both but i'm also pro the truth i want to know what the facts are now that all of that is out of the way let's talk about which do i actually recommend well it differs a little bit if you're brand new and you want to get involved into crypto mining absolutely i think gpus is the way to go more than likely you probably have a gpu you could be potentially watching this on your main computer or possibly your phone but you probably already have something to get involved to get your feet wet it's a great entry point and i think it's fantastic and i still love doing it absolutely but i also like making money there is one thing to mention in the bear market don't i always preach that we should expand absolutely and i still believe that there's better ways to expand and there's worse ways to expand but don't get too confused. It's not all situations that I would say just get the GPU. If you're more experienced, if you already have a bunch of graphics cards, I think, yeah, absolutely. It's worth it to get the latest and greatest GPU. Maybe not Cadena though, because Cadena consistently screws over their people. Let's go ahead and look at this here, man. So at 15 cents kilowatt here, which actually is the United States national average. I hate that people show 12 and 10 because 15 is the average for the United States. The D9 is making 20 dollars k7 is making 13.90 dollars and again it depends on the time of day that you look at this and the cadena miner which is 12.79 a day the risk with these asics is the fact that they can become outdated and the extremely risky way is to get involved with cadena because cadena continues to give you a brand new asic and then that one's extinct in three months it has happened with the ivy link that came out just before the ka3 or about the same time as the ka3 it is cap has happened with the kd max it is going to continue to probably happen with a ka4 or ka5 they just continue to do this bitmain continues to kill the cadena miners and it becomes more and more difficult and you spend top dollar on the cadena projects and then before you know it a couple months later everybody else has a cadena miner that's four times six times whatever it is three times better and now you're just sitting there holding the bag this is why i think something like ckb while still risky i want to be honest with you buying any of these asics is going to be extremely risky and why I don't think that new people should get involved in ASIC mining, but your more experienced people, your more seasoned people who already have graphics cards, who are ready to diversify, probably should diversify. You really shouldn't have ever all your eggs in one basket. That's just my opinion. And then yes, maybe something like the Dash Miner is better for you or the K7 is better for you. Why? Because historically they don't get replaced nearly as quickly. If you look back here, right? If you look at the D9, this is the newest and greatest. Well, the D7 is still doing extremely well. Look at this. This has been the best Dash miner for quite some time now, guys, and it's still making 1128 while their newest miner is out. Now, that could be because they're not on the market yet. Absolutely. I 100% agree with you. You could cut all these numbers in half, and even if you cut it by 80%, it would still be significantly 
significantly more profitable than graphics cards. Now, I want you to think about something here. Imagine these numbers in the bull run, right? High risk, massive reward, potentially. I don't know what the future will entail, but these $15 days that you're seeing people like me, $20 a day if you have better electric, can you imagine what will happen in the bull run? Could we see $40 days? $50 days. Will we see what we saw in 2021 where some of these ASICs, if you got them for cheap enough, are going to pay themselves off in three, five, six months? Absolutely. I definitely think so. But that again is where it gets risky because what if in between now and the bull run, a new miner comes out? You have to consider that. You have to think about that. You have to factor that in. And this is why someone like Fully Electric made a really good point. And this is why I've shifted my mind so much on the ASIC game. You can't marry these ASICs the same way you do with your GPUs, right? Let's pretend this is a graphics card. Usually you get your GPU, you keep it for five, six, eight years, whatever it is, you run it till it's dead and you love the thing. You make love to it and it's great. You can't do that with a lot of these ASICs. Really, you shouldn't do that with any of these ASICs. You buy the hot ASIC, you mine with it, you get a bunch of coins or you swap it to Bitcoin, whatever you want to do. And then you have to sell it off, man. You have to get into that game of, of selling it in the bull market. You can't marry it the same way you would with your GPUs. So yes, very risky. And I can't recommend getting involved in ASIC miners unless you really understand what you're doing and you have enough GPUs to the fact of you're like, okay, I'm ready to look into something else. It's the same thing with, I would never say get into solely real estate. I would never say just get into to crypto, just get into the stock market. I would say, you know, get involved a little bit of crypto, get involved a little bit of real estate, get right. Same thing here. Get a little bit involved in ASIC, get your feet wet, maybe get one or two, but keep those GPUs going. Vice versa, if you're only in ASICs, why not buy a little bit of GPU? So it really comes to what is your strategy? In summary, absolutely, ASICs at this moment are king. Absolutely, the data is showing that GPUs cannot even compete. It's laughable comparison at the moment. But years from now, who knows what will happen? Although years from now, if you're going to make that argument, would you still have your K7? Would you still have your KA3 or your D9? I don't think so. I really think you would have hopefully sold it by then and you would buy the newest ASIC. And then so this same story that we're seeing here is going to continue in the upside. So will the prices go up? Absolutely. So for me, uh, I definitely would say if you're new, stick with GPUs. If you've already established yourself, yes, absolutely. Consider getting one of the ASICs, but do not, in my opinion, do not get Kadena miners unless it's like a little baby one that you don't mind throwing your money away. Or you get that Kadena miner for a really good price, right? Like if crypto investor, I remember he got his brand new when it first came out for like 5,000 bucks. Absolutely. You know what? In that situation, sure. But you can't keep these ASICs too long or they will bite you in the ass. It's high risk, high reward. I have to say, this is probably one of the most fun videos I have ever made on my channel. I like presenting it in this way. And maybe it's because I actually did some work behind it. And usually I would use just solely my opinion and stuff. And I actually did a little bit of research and presented that to you. Let me know if you like this style at all, if it's entertaining. I'm perfectly fine with you disagreeing or agreeing in the comment section below, but I do hope that you actually watched it. If you did, please put in hashtag marker or hashtag pink. I don't care. Hashtag marker in the comment section below, man. I hope I didn't ruffle too many feathers, but I'm not interested in that. I'm interested more in what is right and actually helping new people out there. Yes, do not get an ASIC if you are new. Yes, consider getting an ASIC if you're experienced or you already have a bunch of GPUs. And of course, if you can afford it. I love every single one of you. Please check me out on Discord and Twitter, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. DJ Mines, signing out.